Well, welcome, dear viewer. Welcome, dear listener. Welcome, dear participant in a gab fest. Would you say, Pat, would that describe it? A gab fest? Absolutely, (laughs) yes. Absolutely. We've had quite a bit of communication from people in recent days, haven't we? You yes. Have, did uh, you have communication from someone? I, I had quite a uh, last week. I had quite a few people contacting me about various things. You know, no, just we're, we're, the audience is certainly growing, and the number of communi- communicants is that the right word? <laughs> That's I think yeah. I don't know. Is that, that the same as so that, is that the people communi- communion? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we're getting we're getting this. Uh, what would you say? Considerable feedback. Aye. Well, I suppose this is a time when. Uh, People's sense of uh, things political, which is what we largely speak about, apart yeah. from the weather. Um, we, uh, you know, somebody like ourselves, you'd be interested in it, uh, whereas at another time of the year, you mightn't be that interested. Mm. Okay, well, listen, Pat, let's get started and we'll keep this tight and to the point. Mm. You do know there's an election in your part of Ireland on Friday. Yeah, that, I had heard of it. Oh, have, on that's, Thursday, that's, rather. That's, that's, is it Friday uh, or Thursday? Friday? Thursday. Uh, Thursday, yeah, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday. Yeah, Thursday, yeah. In other words, the next time we communicate, <coughs> right. there may be a new uh, government information. Well, they won't know that, Jude, because it's PR election. So you know, well, uh, 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 it takes too long. Place. But let me, Jude, no, 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 Jude, remember we both said the same. There, there, there was a sort of this 50 50 thing hmm. between a lot of people sort of writing Sinn Fein off, which by the way, we also accept because of recent controversies. Hmm. But I got the distinct impression at the time that it wasn't quite as bad as a lot of the Dublin bubble media were saying. Because, hmm. Jude, I have talked to a lot of people and they're saying, you know, Sinn Fein were getting hammered about things that a lot of it was outside of control. You no, know, the Mickey McMoneyal thing and the, yeah. uh, what, the Stanley down south and so on. Yeah. A lot of that was not of their making. And in fact, the only thing you could uh, hold, uh, take them up on was the fact that maybe they could have handled it better. But well, it you was, could the, say, Pat, you could say, well, the, these people were members of Sinn Fein or worked for Sinn Fein. And uh, I mean, this is the kind of person that. Uh, is a member of Sinn Féin or a Sinn Féin representative. Could you say that? No, Jude, you couldn't. Not at all, no. Jude, every party's well, got... They, a, well, they a, are, No, Pat. Jude, no, they no, are. no, no, they no, are. no, 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 Jude. Uh, I, I have known parties uh, of Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, who have a wide gamut of people and they have all sorts and sizes and shapes. And I believe, got... see, I'd accept that completely. I agree with yeah. you. And that's yeah. the point, is of yeah. course they are Sinn Féin people and of course these people have done wrong things. But I mean, what yeah. are you talking about? You're talking about an organization of thousands of people. Yeah, that's exactly the point. But here's the other thing. Let's move on. No, no, a lot of, what is it, 18 of the current uh, Fun people are not standing. Nobody ever asked, you know, what's that about? They, they all, you know, the media in the South just played ball, like played possum. There was no reason some of those guys were stepping down. Well, mm-hmm. I would say there was a lot of maybe ill feeling in the background of quite a few of them. The other thing, there was two, uh, I think as it killed there, two Fina get foiled guys resigned from the party and they're standing somewhere down there as independents. No one mentioned that. Uh, Pascal Donnell, who uh, was uh, was the uh, ditch, the, uh, that um, you know, sort of investigative podcast people, they found out or uh, they alleged that the Israelis released documents that said Pascal Donahue had, had said that the sort of, um, how do you call it, the territories bill, you know, would not go ahead. Mm. Uh, and, Is this and, the, di- the ditch you're talking about, Pat? The that ditch, organization, the ditch? The ditch, yeah. You know, that was just dropped. Yet Sinn Féin, uh, the whole thing, you know, about a lot of sort of internal procedures, you know, and I think I think a lot of people said, look, this is a load of you. They, you know, OK, they should have handled it better. But this is not my son can't get a job. My daughter can't get a house. My whatever can't get an appointment in the hospital and all the rest. Of it. And Jude, I think that in recent days has actually become an issue again. Uh, uh, I absolutely. Uh, in fact, I would say the, the affairs of the North, which is what it was largely apart from Stanley, uh, yeah. are of little interest for better or worse. In the in the minds of the people in the south, uh, yeah. What well, let us talk about one moment, which was lasted for about thirty seconds, but it really has had an impact, and that's the the moment when Simon Harris uh, met with that or ran into that woman. I've forgotten her name now. But... Charlotte Fallon. 
Very good. Char uh, what is it again? Charlotte Fallon. She's Charlotte a care Fallon. worker. Uh, yeah. And uh, that clip has been played, has been viewed over two million times. And yeah. maybe just in case people don't know, it's Simon Harris is in a busy sort of shopping center, I think, and he's uh, hurrying on with his uh, minders. And uh, this woman, say, he says hello to her, I think, or maybe even shakes hands with her. And she says, could I talk to you for a minute? And he's, he's going so fast, he has to come back again. And he then yeah. says, oh, of course. And she says that uh, the way they're being treated, these care minders uh, of people, is totally unfair. And he says, no, it's not, or words to that effect. And he argues with her, and he looks sort of ratty. He looks a bit yeah. cheesed off. Now... <laughs> She then um, says, you're wrong, I know. And then he goes on and leaves her. And she says, yeah, go on, go on, shake hands. She yeah, goes, yeah, she says, basically, all you can, all you people can do is sort of talk about these things. Ah, but when you're confronted right. with it, you don't want to do anything. Ah, that's right. And uh, then Simon realized what an awful faux pas that was. Yeah. And he says he rang her on Saturday. Now, I'm going to read it out, and I'm going to emphasize four parts of it, Pat. Four phrases. Yep. And I want you to tell me which of the four you find the most amusing. He says, he rang her on Saturday and he said, I'm really grateful for the conversation. I learned a lot from it. And I'd also like to say that I'd love to call in where she works in Cork in the coming weeks. She said I'd be very welcome. So I really do appreciate that. Now, which, which one of those makes you want to take a cushion, push it in your mouth and fall on the floor uh, laughing? I'd, I'd like to call in in a couple of weeks' time. The election's <laughs> going to be over in a couple of weeks' time. That's a lot of bollocks. But uh, no, you know, that I wanna, you know, hey, you know, Finn Gale, uh, remember, by the way, just to digress, remember Gordon Brown's famous one when he was confronted by the woman? And I remember he got an answer, uh, someone like, what an awful bigoted bitch or something. Uh, horrible her, whatever. bigoted woman, yeah. Uh, a horrible bigoted woman. And he didn't realize that the uh, mic was still on. And that that just blew him out of the water, electorally, you know, at the time. Harris was going along quite well. But, but hey, Jude, uh, 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 and by the way, I saw it. It didn't play well. It really didn't. Harris allegedly came into politics. Uh, on this whole disability thing, and uh, and he's he's he has, in fairness, mentioned in the past. But hey, Jude, here's the thing: disability and and the republic is really, really badly treated. There's a lot of you know now they're spending more money than they used to. But jeepers, Jude, God bless you if you're a handicapped person any or have a disability of any kind or need sort of or uh, on the spectrum. You know, uh, you know, once you're over eighteen. Bye bye, you're out of the system. Anyway, let, let me wow. remember Michael O'Leary. And the funny girls yes. seem to have remember Michael O'Leary, the moment about teachers. And dude, there's been a couple along the way, and now this one from Harris. And and, and you know Sinn Fein uh, have a week to go. And I know that one in America, Jude, and uh, where they said the pollsters keep getting a draw because mm -hmm. you know these are the days now a lot of people who are maybe the undecided. Could decide, and you know, I would love to know. And like, and I am not as one of these sociologists, but I would love to know how that video of Simon Harris and his encounter with Charlotte Fallon, how much of an impact that will have on on the morning uh, of the election. Well, I'll tell you something, Pat, and this is the truth. I honestly think that it doesn't tell you very much that you mightn't have guessed before. Mm. Uh, I mean, what is it? It's an, an exchange with a woman where he disagrees with her and he, he goes off and she's a bit, bit upset. Now, that's not world shattering. No, but, it's not. But when the cameras are rolling, people just zero in on it and they say, this actually is the way he really is. As yeah. I think from the guy who makes the public speeches. Yeah. I think that was sort of confirmed for many people by that little uh, quotation I gave you, you know, yeah. where he's saying, I'm really grateful. I learned a lot. I'd love to call. I that's, really all, love that's to all PR spun, without uh, question. What was sort of, I, I don't know, what are you, how, what would your reaction be? Mine was bad, I have to confess. When he said, you know, I feel strongly about disability because my brother was autistic. And that's yeah. what got me into politics. And then he says, oh, well, yeah. it's got me into it earlier than it would have otherwise. What, yeah. what, what, how do you think of that kind of um, what yeah. would say, revelation in the in the light of his um, contretemps with the woman uh, in court? Uh, like, uh, 
you know, um, that's you know, I am not racist. I have a black friend type. Aye, that's that? it. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Exactly, Pat. Exactly. I actually find it. In one way, I'm, I'm sympathetic. I mean, if the guy's got an autistic brother, he's got an autistic brother. He has, brother, yeah. And I'm, that's I'm, hard. I'm, but yeah. you get it's like sometimes people use casual. They used to use this during the trouble casualties as yeah. kind of ammunition. You know, mm. point to coffins and then sort of throw them metaphorically at the enemy. No, I think your point earlier on was the fact that now you have to be fair to Harris. Harris has a good enough track record. Mm. But what that your point earlier on. You know this sort of public face that this charming one. Like he wasn't interested in listening to her. All mm. he wanted to do was get on and so on. And mm. I think a lot of people think that about the politics. Jude, if you, uh, I'm repeating myself, but and seeing the Republic of Ireland, if you have a child with a disability or a handicap of any kind, physical or intellectual, mm -hmm. you, you can be a, you can be find yourself in a very very lonely place. There are not a lot of facility. There are not a lot of avenues you can go down. And a lot of families are left caring for, uh, carrying a heavy burden. That's suppose is the best way I can put it. Mm. Well, I've been looking at clips, you know, from other politicians. Uh, Michal Martin has this sort of little repeating himself and speaking so fast that, you, you know, he has to go back on what he's saying or sort of a slight stammer almost. Yeah. Mary Lou MacDonald strikes me as a very accomplished um interact her with the public. Uh, yeah. I've watched a lot of clips where she's uh, talking to people and carrying people in Dublin and so on. And she has this capacity to uh, shake hands with them or laugh with them or even give them a hug. Now, whether yeah. that's the skills of a politician or whether it's just as part of the way she is, I'm not sure. What What would your take on that be? Uh, well, you know, you know, some of the people laugh at this, but I, I remember meeting Barry Ahern years ago. And, you know, it wasn't... It, yeah, he was the teacher at the time, but he was so down to earth. I remember meeting him, you know, and uh, you know, within two minutes, he was thought he was your he was best friend, and mm. he had that genuine sort of warmth. And you know, and a lot of people sort of said whatever, whatever. Mm. Now I'm not saying Mary Lou and Bertie are the same uh, personality or or characteristics or whatever, but some people have that warmth. Mm -hmm. Bertie had it, and I think Mary Lou. Now I met I my wife met Mary Lou some years ago, and she didn't know from Adam, and the two of them started chatting for about five minutes. And then the two have gone like a house and fire. And it, like that was just Mary Lou's sort of warmth, you know? Uh, well, that's, you see, that's a, a huge asset, I think, to have if you're dealing with the public. Uh, it's that sort of natural quality where you're kind of interested in people. And in fact, dare I say it, Pat, you'd be a wee bit, wee bit that way yourself. You know, you, I have seen you working with people or talking to people in public situations. And you've got that uh, sort of, it's not hail fellow well met. It's just a natural kind of conversation. I heard somebody talking yesterday and they said that I think it's William Crawley, actually. And he mentioned the fact that uh, he was talking about Simon Harris's misstep. And he mentioned the fact that Mary Lou was faced with meeting somebody uh, who was talking about their child being uh, disabled or, you know, um, yeah, whatever. having a problem of some kind. And her first response was, what, what, what's your, what's your, what's your son's name? Yeah. And that struck a chord that you know that yeah. humanized the situation yeah now whether that's uh professional training or whether that's something that comes naturally to her i think that's the kind of thing that people respond to yeah you could be wrong and i could be wrong i don't think you can teach that no. it's empathy yeah 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 that's true well let's say it comes more naturally to some people than others uh, yeah i yeah. don't think simon harris will ever learn it i actually yeah. In some ways, that interaction with that woman was sort of typical of him in that yeah. he's he's so hurrying and so... Yeah. He, he doesn't he, he, look, he th you think he wants to meet every voter in Ireland? Uh, yes, you know, yes, that's yeah. right. And uh, there's, the, as I say, the interaction with people is a wee bit... Um, uh, but anyway, Dr. Collins, let's move on a wee bit. Uh, uh, you, the, 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 I just find that uh, very uh, interesting, though. It is terribly like that Gordon Brown moment. Uh, it is, actually. But here, Jude... It, remember a couple of weeks back, um, Sinn Féin had nearly fallen off the cliff politically. Well, they're yeah. looking now, Fianna, I wrote it down because I'm useless at remembering figures. Fianna yeah. Foyle's on 21%, Sinn Féin are on 20%, and Finn Gale are on 19%. So that's some sort of turnaround for Finn Gale. I think they were eight points ahead at one stage. I, I Pat, maybe, you know, uh, Julius Caesar said, men readily believe that which they desire. Yeah. I, yeah. Have, I, I think I may be guilty of that. 
because it does seem to me maybe it's just that I'm reading the, the on on Twitter, but there's a huge number of videos and positive stuff coming through in terms of uh, especially Mary Lou McDonald, but just yeah. generally and people mm -hmm. and people like Pierce Doherty saying, you know, we can do this. We can yeah. do this. We don't have to have a Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. We can do it. And yeah. They're absolutely right. In theory, at least, of all the people, I think, that would have uh, a sympathy towards Sinn Féin as well as being devoted followers of Sinn Féin, if they all vote for Sinn Féin, you actually could have something very close to a majority. Right. But, you know, one other thing is that we have to remember, you know, I remember in about 2000, people have, I have the top vote there is Fianna Fáil, 21%. I remember in 2011, after the economic crisis, and yes. Fianna Fáil, they were the greatest shambles uh, ever. They give the bank guarantee. We were broke. We couldn't, uh, we could hardly buy a toilet roll and all the rest of it. Yeah. Fair play to Michal Martin. I thought, I thought, uh, Fianna Fáil were just staring right into the bus and fight yeah, for Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he rebuilt them. He, he, he has he, rebuilt that party. He saved and their lives. Yeah. He saved their so lives. in other words, what's going to happen now, if these figures are right, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael will go back into the coalition. They probably will. Let's, let's be real here. But uh, uh, if these figures are right, Michal Martin will get as the top dog. He will have first choice of Tisha and all the rest of it. If, he gets, if the figures are correct, Whoever there's well, the majority, yeah. he's going to call it June. Yeah, well, now, they, the polls haven't been all that reliable, although they do seem to show the direction of travel. Uh, yeah. They, if you want to go by the boogies, the boogies in the States got it right with regard to Trump, you know. Yeah. At a time when people were saying, oh, no, I'll not get in. And the last time I looked at the boogies, it is a fact that Fine Gael was way ahead. And, yeah. Um, Fianna Fáil was way, fairly healthily ahead and Sinn Féin was very sort of bringing up the rear. Now, yeah. now I looked at that before the, the, the Gordon Brown moment for Simon, so I can't say yeah. for sure that's the case now. But I was very mm -hmm. struck by that. Rookies don't usually get it wrong. But at the same time, I keep thinking about 2020 and the fact that, you know, the, the, nobody expected them to go anywhere and suddenly they just flourished and... Um, and I would say that a lot of people are feeling in a similar mood as they were in 2020. Do you not think so? Yeah, Jude, I think there's a lot of young people. And the young, we have, a, uh, in the Republic, have one of the highest, uh, uh, what would you say, percentage of yeah. uh, youngsters voting. And I think a lot of those people, you know, they are saying, look, things about it. Jude, Ireland is a lovely place for the nice middle class. I'm repeating yeah. myself. I've said that for, for years. The people who have got the nice cars and, the, you know, the old, the yachts and they have nuts, you know, and that is, you know, a lot of young people are now coming in. Go down, if you go down any planet, and I keep saying this, pay, paying £4.50 or €4 Euros 50 for a cup of coffee. Try, you know, you okay, everybody talks about maybe a good pension for certain people or, you know, all being on the dole, being reasonable. No, dude, when, 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 you, when uh, you hear of people, I think it's a third of kids in Dublin, I think we mentioned the last day, are, were going to school or are going to school without a proper breakfast. You know, mm. that's a reality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. L listen, let's move on a wee bit, uh, sort of sideways, as it were. Um, there's an article in the Irish Times today by Seanine Graham, and the heading is Inside Sinn Féin in the North, ha how it has moved from crisis to war footing for the Republic of Ireland general election. What do you think of that as an editor? What do you think of that as a headline? <laughs> uh, you, uh, I do, uh, so, uh, so see things, like I just don't pay attention to them. I really genuinely don't. But I reached the state, basically what I think is what's happening, and I'm repeating myself here again. I think a lot of people in Sinn Féin are sort of saying, look, this is, they've been piling on us, onto us for a, a, a several months, right? Yeah, uh, and they, they they interviewed what is it? Said, they said seven or eight people, and none of them are named. And they, they sort of said the party messed up with Michael McMonigal and about uh, mm -hmm. the two guys giving them uh, they were sacked. The uh, what what do you call the uh, was it McGee, the the councillor who uh, was supposed to have sent an uh, an appropriate text to somebody, um, O'Donnell who had he resigned down south from the or yeah. resigned yeah. all this. Yeah, yeah. The bottom line of it, a lot of. Sinn Féin and the North are apparently are sending uh, dragoons down south, you know, uh, yeah. and yeah. all the rest. And they have concentrated so much uh, on this election that I think when they get back uh, up north, they'll probably try and put their house in order. But, Jude, I've said this in the past. 
Sinn Féin in the North is a very different organisation to Sinn Féin in the South. Sinn Féin in the North are normally unbelievably disciplined. They're normally uh, get the vote out. They can know even down in nearly what side of the street how many votes they can get. Down South, they didn't even know how many candidates they run the last election. One time they run too many, the next time they run too few. Uh, but, Pat, <laughs> but, but that was a very understandable thing to do because it yeah. got sliced to ribbons in the local elections. Uh, yeah. A couple of years earlier, or was it even shorter than a couple of years earlier? And they mm. wanted to make sure that they didn't to suffer the same fate again. So they were yeah. playing really safe. And then suddenly uh, the thing exploded. So and then local elections, it looked like they put out too many. So yeah. it's hard to say. It's hard to say. But certainly if they certainly have enough candidates now. So the question is whether or not people have voted. Uh, come seven, back to that seven. headline. I think. Wait, 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 uh, what, no, what's got you excited about that headline? I just this. Uh, well, first of all, I'd say this generally. I don't understand the uh, headlines that the Irish Times have. They're always very long and sort of tedious. Yeah, like, yeah. That's a headline there. Inside Sinn Féin in the North, colon, how it has moved from crisis to war funding for the Republic of Ireland general election. A headline? That's a, that's half an article, nearly. <laughs> I just don't get it. But anyway, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, it does seem to me that every day there has to be, if not a direct hit at Sinn Féin in the Irish Times in some form, then an indirect one. And I mean, that headline which talks about from crisis to war footing. War footing, uh, yeah, war yeah, usually... footing because they're going down to help the canvas in Dublin yeah. Yeah. or yeah. wherever. Uh, uh, that, it's always pejorative, isn't it? It is. Now, do you think that Sinn Féin, and they've pulled back from this a bit now, do you think there was a wise idea to say uh, we are going to have a, an independent um, assessment of how even-handed RTE is? No, I, I, by the way, Richard, I totally uh, support that. Dude, you know something, if you're, you know, as one of the guys in the Irish Times article, you point the war is over a long time, dude, and this sort of something, the, 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 the IRA ceasefires were in 1994, what's that, 30 years ago, dude? Yeah. And yet they're, yeah. Still, they're still using all this crap. Sinn Féin are a democratic, uh, legitimate party, and it's been proven time and time again. And that this sort of smear campaign, it's, uh, it's all the rest of Dude, basically, it's the right wing establishment saying, "Hey, we have had it so good for so long, you, you people." And, and you know, it's the old Murdoch, uh, Trump, uh, Tory party crap. They you know the, the those who are you know they are who are well off. They do not want. Uh, you know, it's the old best way I put it. It's for the few, not the many. Mm. But you see, I think if I was in Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael, I'd be very worried that Sinn Féin, they already have sort of established themselves in the doll. Uh, mm -hmm. But they're getting to the point where they're going to make, it's possible that that whole thing of either Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael as the government, or both, is going to stop. Uh, I yeah. mean, that'd be very hard to adjust to. If you, your father and your grandfather and everybody you knew what, way back to 100 years ago, were voting and saw the natural government as being a particular parties. Uh, yeah. you know, you, the, the idea of these um, nasty people from essentially from the north originally infecting the population of the south, uh, I think it'd be pretty cheesed off. Jude, you, you, you've hit the nail on the head. That's what a lot of it's about. There's a lot of serious anti-Northern uh, stuff and the old Irish Times and the Irish Independent, they mm -hmm. they, they deny it. But you know, uh, when you see even the GEA teams, you no know, Tyrone and Armagh, they're, they're not loved. You know, mm -hmm. this in the same way as Kerry or whatever it was. How do you feel about Donegal? Uh, Donegal, is, uh, I think, is one of the most unusual hybrids. They're not sure. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, uh, let's move on a wee bit. Uh, they, they, there's um, loyalist victims, I uh, see this headline, loyalist victims challenge British state over weapons importation. Yeah. And yeah. this is two guys, Brian Frizzell and Alan yeah. Lundy, who were shot dead. One was shot dead in 1981, another was shot dead in 1993. The first one was shot dead along with two women. Do you remember that teenage girl yeah, yeah. at the moment? Yeah. Uh, chippy. Uh, that was an uh, awful shooting, yeah. Oh, totally, I remember it so well. Totally innocent awful, girls, yeah. Horrible. Yeah. And then the, the guy Lundy was shot in Alex Vasquez's house. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the point is that they are now being uh, brought to the high court and the allegation is that the state assisted them by yeah. the importation of weapons, in their importation of weapons. 
Do you think there's that likely to have actually happened? I mean, do, do you know and I know it, that I, I'm going to swear there that uh, of course it happened, absolutely 100%. And what did, way, you, Pat, what, what, what did you did? say happened then? How did the state supply them with arms? There, there was a certain well known BBC journalist who unfortunately is no longer with us. But and he was a good friend of mine many years ago, and he used to tell me that the UDA and the UFF couldn't organise a dinner. He says never mind a bombing campaign. He says without help from uh, the, the British, and he told me that out openly. And dude, you seriously tell me that the UDA who uh, were infiltrated right, left, and centre, they had more, they had more leaks than a sieve. and they were able to import uh, arms from South Africa without the Brits knowing. Should give us a break. It, 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 it's as clear as that those glasses you have on you right now that the Brits <laughs> knew exactly what was happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a sad tale, and you know the thing is, why is it packed? You're you're a member of you're a, a citizen of the state in the southern yeah. state. How is it that the Dublin Monaghan bombings were never fully investigated? Because <clears> you're what you've just said. You've said these guys couldn't organise a picnic, never mind a campaign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet the Dublin and Monaghan bombings, from their point of view, were very successful. They Jim, uh, 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 part of it, I guess, uh, 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 you know when you're a newspaper editor, you talk to a lot of people over the years. But yeah. I know a couple of people in Dublin, and I know of what are, who told me that they know for certain that the British intelligence were up to their eyeballs in Dublin, Monaghan. There have been more... Uh, Newspaper articles saying the same thing. Dude, I don't think it's even up for discussion anymore. That the the whole uh, thing. This, they were sending a message to Dublin: keep your uh, uh, fingers out of the north, or this is what happened to you. And the British eyeballs on it. Why hasn't uh, no any government? I mean, that was way back in 1970. What was it? Two or whatever. About 72. Uh, why, why? Why has 70. none of the governments, and many governments at the south of scene, ever spoken up about that? I presume there's uh, over the years uh, the, the uh, what would you say the, the, no the old British one never open a war on two fronts the, the Dublin government uh, saw the IRA as a far bigger threat to the state than the Brits so they 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 would even though they might not have agreed with it they, they were not going to sort of uh, say that the Brits had done it can you imagine if the Dublin government in 1971 72 said we can now have conclusive proof that the British rubbed their eyeballs and the Dub Dublin bombing, Dublin London bombings. Can you imagine the, the what would you say the absolute uh, uh, rush to join the IRA from Irish people? Well, given the fact that that's all in the past now, how, how is it that there isn't somebody who would uh, some people who would come out and uh, you know say here here's investigate the thing from a distance yeah. and uh, say well this is what happened this is the way the, the war or whatever you want to call it the conflict but proceeded with huge British yeah. interference. Perhaps when this this case comes to court, uh, there might be something spilled there. We hope. Yeah, we exactly. Know, we yeah. Hope. Uh, well, we're running out of time now. Uh, there's a mention also, and I don't know if it's the Irish Times or the Irish News, but about John uh, Stalker. Do you remember John Stalker's back in the eighties, nineteen eighties? I remember him very well. Yeah, um, very well. He was the deputy chief constable of Greater Manchester, and he was sent over to check out and do a, a, an analysis of what was going on, and. You can tell us what happened to him. Uh, he was basically destroyed. Apparently, Stalker was not for returning. He found out evidence. Of the, I think it was the FRU had actually executed or shot dead uh, a young fellow, member Arms. He also said that when he went to see Jack Herman, Sir Jack Herman, the RUC chief constable, he says, uh, uh, Herman sort of took out a cigarette packet and wrote down, these are the enemies that you have to... One of whom was, uh, what do you call him, uh, Finucan, Pat Finucan. And so on, Pat, and Pat Finucan was shot dead some time later. Uh, he, he, he said, basically, Herman uh, was working... He didn't actually say it. Herman, I think, tried to sue a couple of people, but basically he was suggesting Sir Jack Herman was a bigot uh, in charge of the RUC, etc., 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 and so on. Anyway, Stalker was uh, investigated all, and he, uh, halfway through it, apparently he started believing a lot of the stuff that he had been told by the nationalist community about policing, about the behaviour, and he was seen as, a, as, as we see, that he had gone native almost, and uh, they destroyed him. They, this guy, he was a friend, I think his name was Taylor, who was a car dealer, and he tried to say that he had, he had been involved in some sort of 
uh, um, nefarious deals with him, which was totally untrue. He was, was totally clear. <laughs> not not at all. The whole thing was dropped, and he was his name was cleared. And as far as I remember, he got compensation, but it was way too late. Dear, dear. Uh, well, this uh, this uh, has been raised in the newspapers because there's a guy called Paddy Hilliard, who's a professor emeritus of sociology in Queens, Queens University, and he's got a book coming out uh, called, I think, Decades of Deceit. The stalker affair and its legacy. Wouldn't yeah. it be neat to think that at least at this stage that the truth will come out? Just as even at this stage, the Dublin and Monaghan bombings, if the truth was to come out. Do I know the nice thing? You know, and it was about the only thing that I, after the whole thing, stalker's reputation towards the end of his life, he he, he was seen as a man of principle. There was a, an, an ad for a security firm. And John Stalker was the guy they got up front to endorse him because he was known, if, if you, this is a man of principle, and if he says this thing works, you can take it that it works. Yeah. And I thought that was sort of vindication in a way. Uh, now, uh, what he was through for 10, 15 years yeah. before that, you can uh, wish it on your worst enemy. His <laughs> reputation was tarnished. I think he lost his job. The mental and physical strain on him must have been uh, unbelievable. But he came through it all. And that's uh, shocking to think, not, not only... Where these vile deeds are practiced, but then when somebody comes in to investigate, officially appointed, they yeah. destroy it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Pat, one question, and then we'll finish. On Thursday, as you know, in your part of Ireland, there will be a general election. Yeah. Give me a prediction. Jim, um, I've been saying this all along. I'm not going to change now. Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael are certain to be back in the next election. Uh, this government. Though, by the way, Sinn Féin might do better than uh, you know currently, uh, so on. But that's it. Uh, it won't be that much different. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll buy you a steak. The 